Hi, everybody, and welcome back. This is uh, what I call episode two of the Dave Emmons Show. And our guest uh, is Dr. Lanny from Brussels, Belgium. And he's a research team manager and PI of MHD, Enhanced Entry Systems for Space. So he's a rocket scientist, and he knows about ET contacts, the uh, Palladians, Octorians, uh, Syrians, all the way down Lyrians. And, and we, you know, he, he'll be talking about them, and he's talked about them in the first segment. If you saw that, he's a space scientist, but he actually it gets into the spiritual esoteric practices and uh, energy healing, and that's uh, something uh, important to all of us, the energy healing. We need that right now. And he gets into the, the Akashic uh, records, and he's also, you know, into the healing uh, other people and he's been healed by i guess a couple of i guess ets himself and they say they can't heal people uh, uh what do you do you cross-reference them and call them angels instead of ets uh dr lenny we ended up on the first episode you were talking about uh you know this praying mantis uh, uh being and then you, you flash it up on the screen it, did you want to continue that or finish that on this episode Oh yeah, I could just uh, give a little comment and then we. Oh, I, I wanted to I wanted to mention Eddie Carson's WDY Radio. Uh, okay, uh, I wanted to mention Eddie Carson's WDY Radio, and he's in uh, Maryland, and it's a uh, Odyssey Radio Live. We're doing a syndication through him, and he'll be replaying the the audio portion, and we and I'll be playing the video portion. I'll be putting out on all the all the platforms. So uh, Dr. Lanny, continue. Just wanted to add that in there. Yeah, sure. So as I was saying, I was flying on this, uh, on this uh, Boeing and, uh, and at the certain moment I see this scratch, I took a picture and then, uh, yeah, by comparing with, uh, with, uh, with the image that I found on a YouTube channel, talking about some contactee of mantis beings, well, you know, you can see a sort of triangular head with uh, with big eyes. You can yeah. see this pose, in particular this pose. And then you have to put all this in context with all the previous experiences of contact that I have I had with this. So for me, this was some sort of self-portrait of the being to show me, like, you know, I'm here, it's true. And uh, he also found a very interesting way of, of showing himself which is on a, on a wing of an airplane, you know, what yeah. better way of introducing yourself to an aerospace engineer. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, so, what were the other spots at the bottom there towards the, uh, the wing? These are other scratches. Okay. So it's just, this is the image that, that actually counts, you know, mm, is this, okay. this one. Yeah. Here. Uh, yeah. You can, yeah, you can tell, I mean, they leave signs, uh, angels leave signs, ETs leave signs for you. You know, and we sometimes we miss them. Yeah, sure, indeed, indeed. That that's a sort of skill that one has to develop in order to enjoy this kind of connection to read the signs. You know, yeah. um, I will go back to sharing the screen later on. Maybe okay. for the moment, I, I can just okay. okay. So yeah, if I want to continue from this point chronologically right. speaking, so we are uh, in uh, April two thousand and nineteen. Um, I sort of decided to to verify, validate some of the information that Elizabeth April told me during the, the session in mm -hmm. LA. And actually one thing that I remember in the previous show, uh, that I forgot in the previous show, is that one of the things that she told me is that the beings that actually contacted me uh, when I was a child were Pleiadians. Uh, and also she told me that these sleep paralysis experiences that I had were actually some form of abduction. What she said is, uh, they tell me that uh, they call it some sort of energetic atonement. So they were sort of upgrading my my system, right? Um, and with energy, with something, with an upgrade of the DNA, junk DNA, or whatever. And they took me somewhere. But what happened is that I woke up in the middle of the process, and so it was almost like my consciousness was detached from the body. Mm -hmm. That's why I couldn't operate in the body, but in some, somehow I could still feel the, the vibration. Right. And, uh, but she couldn't tell me who actually abducted me. Um, this is an information that I will get later on. So right. I, I just want to, uh, uh, you know, jump in re real quick. There's three forms of abductions that I know of. And, and being a scientist, you might be able to elaborate on this. The first one is bedside. They're, they're beside your bed. They take skin samples, DNA samples. They even take semen uh, from men. 
women is more of a, uh, I guess, a, a, a more difficult procedure where they, they, uh, you know, take out eggs uh, for, you know, for uh, a hybrid usage. But the, the second one is where they actually take you to the, to the UFO it's itself. They actually take your whole body. The third one is just like you said, they take your consciousness, your energy and your spirit, because I was left frozen. I mean, body was frozen. I don't know if you've had that at, at uh, six years in a row, almost on the same day, they come back and visit. They take your energy and your spiritual, your spiritual energy, and they take your consciousness to another dimension or whatever. And that's what you're talking about. Now you can, yeah, sorry. Yeah, they, add they, that they, in there. I just, I just, sorry that I had to add that in there, but yeah, I, I just wanted to add that in there because you're on the right track, really. Yeah, no, so, so yeah, indeed. So they are able to operate uh, on your astral body. Uh, they don't need to operate directly on your physical body. But of course, I mean, the ones who are doing abductions are very different races. So there are some that have a certain agenda, some that have another agenda. So what I figure out later on, and this was another psychic that told me that um, uh, it's called Indigo Angel. She told me that actually you have been abducted since you were a child mm -hmm. by Arturians. And she didn't know anything about my sleep paralysis or, or anything, but she told me Arturians. So now I knew who actually did the, the thing. And actually I connected to them right before that session. So this could validate. I, I didn't know why I was in contact with Arturians. And she told me later on, you have been abducted by Arturian. So now I understood the connection, but I, I will go back to that okay. a bit uh, following a bit. Okay. You know. um, so uh, we are uh, around in uh, April, uh, 2019. So one of the ways I tried to validate what uh, Elizabeth April told me was uh, through past life regressions under hypnosis. So I found a local practitioner. My, my actual uh, goal was actually to see some cosmic lives because uh, Elizabeth told me about this cosmic life, but this is not what I saw. I, I didn't get to that, that far. I went far like to, to Egypt. I saw some stuff like a, a life as a young healer in the Netherlands that was uh, uh, like uh, burned on the stake. And uh, I saw other lives, even uh, some, uh, let's say famous personalities, but I, I would keep it more on the alien stuff. So let's Okay. We just had a just had another glitch. Uh, hopefully that'll be the last of it. <laughs> okay. It's so zoom. I start... zoom. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no problem. Yeah. So I got in touch with um, with a Turkish uh, lady here in in Brussels that uh, does some sort of shamanic sessions based on sound healing. So right. she uses drumming and she uses uh, singing bowls. Yeah. And uh, I I join some of her uh, group sessions. So typically up to seven people. We just lie down and she plays her stuff and uh, the experience can be pretty intense. So I was absolutely, you know, I didn't know really what to expect. My goal was either to have an out of body experience or to get in contact with the, some beings, you know. And um, so the first time I did this session, actually what happened is that every time that she was changing the tone of her drum, uh, this was resonating with a different chakra point in my body. So like she was beating maybe three, 30 times the same tone and I felt my third eye pul pulsating. Then she changed and then I felt suddenly a pressure in my throat and then in my heart. And then uh, so it was almost like I was synchronized with the frequencies that she was activating with the with the drum. So she was impressed herself that uh, in the first session, uh, I mean, for me, uh, I had this reaction. Well, you know, oh, Dr. Lenny, I played drums for 45 years and the only thing I got out of it is I got, I got drunk. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. okay. No yeah, drugs, I... just, just booze, you know? Yeah. I'm just, just, just trying to break the air there with a little humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Super fun. But actually I play drums. So. Do you? Oh, great. No, 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 not shamanic one, a real drum, you know? Really? So. Uh, you know, ETs like musicians, John Lennon. Yeah. All because of, of what vibrations, I think. Yeah, yeah. Frequency yeah. vibration, you know. Right. Yeah. So you're a drummer. That's great. Uh, you got all the elements. I think the ETs have also raised your IQ because you're you're a rocket scientist. You know? Well, that, I don't know, but maybe. yeah, maybe you know. So yeah. So at the end, uh, what happened? So and actually during the same session, also 
uh, actually, my intention for that session was open my third eye so that I could see, you know, yeah. beyond this physical reality. But what I saw is actually uh, like a ball of purple light that was actually forming more or less in this location, and then was always ending up in in uh, in the middle of my forehead and with eyes closed. I mean, so every time that she was beating at the beginning the the drum, I was seeing this ball going from here to there, from here to there. From then once once she stopped playing that tone and she went to the other one, I didn't see anything anymore. I just felt the pressure on my throat, then on my heart, and so on. I joined sessions uh, multiple times, uh, three or four times, let's say. And um, one time I had a much more intense experience and I, uh, I realized that something was unlocking. Um, so basically the session was about one hour. During the session, I had no particular feeling. Which I was pretty disappointed because I always had big expectation that something would happen. Right. And, uh, but when, when the music stopped, suddenly my body, I feel my body is spinning on a spinning wheel. I, my eyelids start flickering in a way that I could not control. And my head also got lift up. Also my hands got a little uh, lift up from the ground. And I was feeling this huge vibration through, through all my body. And, uh, and then she even came to touch me in the, in, the, in the chest to check how it was going. Can, and, I, uh, can I say something? I want to interject because you are so right on. I mean, you're real because I can, I talk to other people and myself. I've had a little three and a half foot little creature beside my bed one night, about three o'clock in the morning, the bewitching hour. I don't know what time they come to visit you, but my oh. eyes work uncontrollably uh, opening and closing, fluttering, just like yours. Bingo. There's a piece of the puzzle. Of course. Yes. I mean, uh, we tap into the same phenomenon, you know, yeah. again. So with little changes here and there, but and uh, yeah, so basically, I think this is one of the most, uh, I mean, uh, common uh, reaction that you have once you get in touch with certain energies. I mean, sometimes it can start with a little tingling somewhere, yeah. but when it gets really intense, it affects your eyelids for some reason that I honestly you, what should ask to a neurologist or something. Uh, scientifically, can you explain that since you're a scientist? I mean, mm, the, the thing is, basically, you get in contact with some uh, high, high frequency currents. Uh, which have a component which is non-physical, like higher dimensional, so to speak. But you can perceive it in a way that uh, is like having electricity flowing through your body. Yeah. And if you have electricity, for instance, if you are hit by a lightning, mm -hmm. your body will react in certain way. We will uh, jerk a bit. Will uh, you know? You will have uh, spasms in your muscles. Right. Of course, in this case, the electricity that uh, flows through your body is not going to affect you in the way that uh, a lightning would do. Why? Because the lightning, let, let's put it this way. So there is this concept of superconductors. I'm familiar with it also because uh, we try to develop a technology based on that. But uh, so in superconductors, basically, you have electricity that passes through without encountering any resistance. In a normal wire, the electricity passes through in encounter resistance and what happens dissipates energy mm -hmm. so the, the wire gets hot right right so the the goal is to turn your body into some sort of superconductor for it, for these high frequency currents and when this happens basically uh, these these currents can flow and the only effect that you feel is like this, uh, this kind of reactions, like you feel tingling, you feel pressures in chakras, you feel uh, eyelids. And, but, but uh, you know, if you take somebody who is not ready to channel this energy, to anchor, let's say, these energies, uh, it could be that these currents flow without uh, having any, eff any effect because there is too much resistance from the body mm. or you can have people that feel pain even because their body is not ready for, for these energies and uh, it affects them negatively. So things that actually contribute to make your body heavy and not open to these energies are some chemicals. Fluoride is one of the, the worst, for instance, the one that you have in, uh, in toothpaste. Right. Um, also some, some kind of drugs, but then some food. 
is also not particularly high, high vibrational, so to speak. And then also emotions. Emotions, if you have trauma stuck in your body, this will prevent some of this energy to flow. So that's why all the energy healing practices typically involve emotional release, no? And uh, also typically, uh, if, uh, let's say, tend to, to, to work better if you change your diet in a way that you can cope better with these energies. But this, this is just a little um, parenthesis, let's say, a little, we, we can come back uh, later, maybe. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, healing and uh, the ETs might have healed you a couple of times throughout your, your life. And Absolutely. I've heard that too, that ETs can heal you. And they can be mistaken for angels, but uh, it, they they can be. I mean, they're all extraterrestrial angels and and ETs and ghosts and the. Well, I don't get into ghosts too much; just the spiritual part of it, uh, mm -hmm. and and also the residual energy part of the ghost thing. But the healing thing. Now, can you heal yourself, or can you heal other people? Uh, yes, and I will. Uh, I will give some uh, some examples maybe uh, later. But uh, yeah. what I can say is that. Um, Okay, when I got in contact with the extraterrestrial the first time during a meditation, uh, I asked as a proof of this contact because I was seeing certain things uh, and I was hearing that I could heal people and do meditation with them and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I asked to be healed myself because at the time I had um, some sort of injury in my left wrist. Right. I had uh, um, uh, inflammation of the tendon and uh, I, it was so bad that I, sometimes I couldn't hold the cup. Wow. And, um, and so basically what happened is that uh, I got the message that they would heal me. So I did the meditation and uh, and after, let's say, 15, well, it was more probably 30 minutes of meditation. Uh, I walk out of the of the of the park and then I almost hear an internal voice saying, check your wrist, check your wrist. And then I was like, oh, OK, I don't feel pain. I don't think I feel pain anymore. And then I put pressure and everything. So. And the day before, I was discussing with uh, with my ex uh, that uh, I probably needed a cortis cortisone injection because that was the, what I used years before when I had the same exact problem. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and so it never came back. So this, uh, but yeah, so this is an example. Then other uh, healing that I personally did on other people involve sometimes the um, the use of Akashic records. So basically. I do meditation one to one with people. I see some trauma which is stuck in past lives and sometimes is affecting their health with specific issues, for instance, allergies or uh, chronic pain or skin infections, these kind of things that are also difficult to to heal with traditional medicine. Um, so, yeah, I can go back to this. Um, but I would like to, yeah, sure. to stay on your chronological. Yeah. 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 So I kept on uh, doing these sessions. Uh, I had energy flowing finally during the sessions. Um, but then, uh, what, what happened? So I had something happening very concentrated within a week, eight days. This was, so we are in, uh, um, let's say, uh, March, 2020. Uh, a little before that, I had done another past life regression with the technique of um, Dolores Cannon, quantum healing yes. hypnosis technique. Right. It was very powerful. Uh, for the first time, I saw some, some of the cosmic lives. In particular, in one, I saw myself in some sort of desolated planet in which the, the sky were, were like red and uh, there was some water uh advancing and this reminded me of some dreams i i don't remember my dream very often but i had at least a couple of times the same dream of basically being a uh, watching dark waters uh like invading the, i mean spreading everywhere and uh, and i felt that i had no escape nowhere to go and the skies were red and so under past life regression i saw a similar scenario but i was just an observer i was not in a physical body then I also saw, then the, the practitioner said, okay, let's change scenario, go somewhere else. And then I saw myself in a dark planet. I mean, dark. Uh, it was during the night or sort of. I could see so many stars. And, uh, and then I could see also a pond. And then I go looking in the pond at myself. And I saw myself looking like a, 
a white being with a long neck, round eyes, white, kind of. And, uh, and then I saw another life in the Pleiades inside. Uh, I was sort of being evaluated for a, for a big mission of which uh, that was mentioned by Elizabeth April, actually. But I, I saw myself inside a uh, sort of looks like a cathedral, but it was made of crystal. And I was inside and I was hanging in the air and there was somebody evaluating me. Um, yeah, and then I saw myself part of a council and, uh, and so on. But so this was in January. Then I, I, I joined a, a 21 day meditation challenge with people that I barely knew. It was an online thing. I, I, I spent a couple of weeks in San Francisco and I was meditating every single day just to, to start doing something more regularly, right. hoping to unlock more stuff. And um, when I came, came back here, I met, I, I threw a party in which I met some of the people uh, from the meditation. In particular, I met this uh, Belgian woman. Well, this Belgian woman appeared to know a lot about uh, uh, cosmic races. She immediately talked about her experience of contact with the Pleiadians uh, and other beings. And then she, at a certain moment, I, I show her something and she had some sort of reaction. Her body jerked like, like this. And mm -hmm. she went almost, almost in a trans channeling state. And she told me, she looked straight in my eyes and she said, I remember you and I remember you on a, on a ship coming from Orion. <laughs> oh. And uh, yeah. so I was like, okay, she was the second person. The, 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 the other one was an Italian woman that I met, uh, that I met uh, some months before that told me that I had been on a ship coming from Orion because she was also the other woman on a ship from Orion. So it was like, okay, that's very interesting. These two people don't know each other and they tell me the same exact thing, right? There's been, there's been several cases of that, Dr. Lani. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, and, and, and then she said, look, uh, we have to meditate together. I want you to meditate with me. Uh, there is more, more to unlock and stuff. So we fixed an appointment. I had to, to go to her place together with some friends and do a meditation. And in the meantime, uh, I had already scheduled an appointment with a Romanian woman who was uh, just uh, visiting Brussels, a friend of a friend who does a particular, who is also very psychic, very connected, and who does a, a special uh, kind of session, which is called um, family constellation. So basically she looked at some, she tried to release some trauma, some ancestral trauma in your lineage from the mother and father side. I was told by the Turkish lady, the one who was doing the shamanic practices, that uh, I was not able to get out of my body because uh, of a trauma from the side of my father. So I said, okay, let's remove, let's remove this trauma and let's see if I then, then I can get out of my body, right? Right. And so I met this woman and uh, as soon as she, she sees me, she said, you are different from the others. Uh, I can immediately see behind you that is a Pleiadian being and I see also an Orion being. And I was like, okay, I, I told her that I was, I knew something about Pleiadians connection, but I didn't tell her anything about Orion and still she saw it. And, um, and then we do the session. And at a certain moment, she looks at me and she said, look, uh, do you want to know what is your mission in life? And I was like, I said, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, and then she said, uh, here, I see all your spirit guides lined up and they tell me that I have to tell you what is your mission in life. And I said, uh, okay, what's my mission? And she said, you are God's messenger. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm not religious, you know, I, I'm bro brought up Catholic, but I was like, okay, interesting. Uh, and she said, they also asked me to tell you that you have to basically tell them explicitly that you want the tools to be able to accomplish your mission. And then I said, okay, can I do it now? I said, okay, you know, give me whatever I need. So she said, within a week, something major will happen in your life. I was like, okay, very nice. No. So I, I, I mean, I wasn't expecting this kind of, you know, message. So four days later, I had already agreed to meet my, my new Belgian friend, the one who had, uh, you know, this trans channel in whatever experience. 
And uh, so we, we go at her place. So basically, this woman spent a lot of time in India. She was initiated by different Swamis and whatever. In particular, she was initiated to something which is called Shakti Pat, is a form of ancient meditation. And uh, she had agreed with this guru to basically initiate me remotely. So I just had to look at him, to see him like uh, on, you know, on video. And uh, he agreed. And then he said, okay, now, you know, we close the connection, you start meditating and the initiation starts. All right, freestyle meditation. It was not a guided meditation or anything, right? And I was no expert, you know. So, so that we were four. So there was this woman, then there was uh, a, a girl who was singing, and there was a guy who was playing the drums. And uh, I was like there on the ground and uh, just put myself in lotus pose and uh, close my eyes. As soon as I close my eyes, I see the spirit. Now, I have to uh, go back a little bit to the year 2000. So before moving to Belgium, I, I will show you. Can I share the screen? Sure, sure. Um, Okay, so, um, I will show you this. In the year 2000, um, a, um, an uncle of mine from the side of my father, uh, somebody that also got some footage in Ethiopia of a UFO, maybe if we have time this time or another time I, I can show it, um, gave me, show me a picture. And the picture is the one that I'm showing to you. Uh, so basically, he went with the wife to, to the south of Italy uh, on a pilgrim, on a religious pilgrimage. They met this woman. I think he was a friend of the wife or something. And this woman actually was taking pictures of the sky. Now, with Dr. Yeah. Lani, uh, we're at the bottom of the hour. We're going to have to take a pause. Uh, okay. And we're going we're gonna to keep that picture up because we'll, we'll continue talking about that after the short pause. Uh, for the commercial break for the uh, radio station WDY, that's Odyssey Radio Live, and this okay. is the Dave Emmons show, and we're talking to Dr. Lani, and he's a space scientist, uh, well, what you call rocket scientist, but he has he has a lot of UFO experience, and he's an experiencer extraordinaire, and he's all actually gotten into the science of it, like the uh, the healing and the, I guess, Reiki and all this and Stargate meditations. We'll be right back for the, the second half of this episode, too. Okay, we're right back. And this is the Dave Emmons Show. And uh, the pause was for the radio station, WDY. Uh, radio and that's Odyssey Radio Live. Eddie Carson's there in in Maryland, and uh, of course uh, on the show now we have Dr. Lanny, and he was just explaining uh, this picture here that, that we have up. We left it up during the break, and of course you can see the video, but uh, we didn't have the audio because we're doing this with the radio station. So, Dr. Lanny, you can continue on with this picture and the story behind it. Sure. So, uh, as I said, my uncle, uh, I mean a friend of my my uncle, basically. Uh, took this picture. Well, she was taking picture of the sky with the analogical camera. So we are in 2000. It was not even digital. And uh, when they develop the film, they, show, they, they saw that uh, this face came out instead of the sky with the clouds. And uh, of course, everybody was puzzled, including the, the guy at the Photoshop, uh, I mean, who, who saw it appearing. And, uh, and as soon as I saw this, uh, I mean, my, my uncle showed me the picture. I was like, I, I want a scan of this. So actually, I, I asked him to give me a scan. I, I put it in, in, inside a book that I kept for, like, you know, uh, 18 years without even opening that book. Mm -hmm. And then more recently, around uh, 2019 or so, I found back the picture. Then I asked him to send me a copy of the picture. I mean, before I had just a scan. Now, this is a copy of the picture, actually. And, uh, and so I show you this because I always wonder who this guy was, right? Um, I mean, I thought it was some spirit or extraterrestrial, whatever. Um, so what happened is, so I stopped sharing. I do this uh, initiation to Shakti Path, And as soon as I close my eyes, 
I see this, this being, this uh, spirit. And he was like sitting in a lotus pose, like in meditation. And he had a white robe and it had uh, like a blue aura all around him. And uh, you have to, uh, I mean, this was quite interesting because during my all previous experiences with meditation, I was never, I had never been able to see anything unless I was under hypnosis. And uh, apart from that experiment with the Akashic record, like uh, uh, more than a year before, I never seen anything. So I was always wanting to see something, but something was blocked. Mm -hmm. But now during the initiation, the first thing, as soon as I close my eyes, I see this face and then the whole body. And then at a certain moment, I see him walking towards me, like in a movie. And then next to him, I see some sort of extraterrestrial being, which was looking like with a triangular face and then some spikes, like maybe four or five spikes on his head and, uh, and uh, wearing a, a purple robe. And also uh, the skin was, was probably in sort of gray greenish. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was asking mentally, I was asking, who are you? And, and I see a, a writing appearing, which was Metatron. So I don't know, in the spiritual community, some associate Metatron to an archangel kind of entity, the Book of Enoch right. about Metatron. Some, you know, when you speak about angels, a lot of people imagine them like, you know, with wings and beautiful yeah. and blonde. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Maybe, you know, some of them are, I mean, very, very benevolent, but they don't look as beautiful. I mean, for what is beautiful at the end, you know? Right. I, I, my, in my research, I found that angels don't have wings. And mm -hmm. that's, that's weird. I mean, uh, yeah. I think, I think this uh, higher dimensional being can project, uh, I mean, they sort of project a holographic image that also uh, adapts to the, to the mind of the receiver. Shape you know, if your yeah. concept of angel is right. white with, uh, with wings, you will see that. But if you have no concept, you know, in my case, I don't really care. I didn't care about angels or anything. Maybe he presented himself in his form, which is more almost like a monster kind of, yeah. but who knows, you know? And um, anyway, so I had this, uh, this visual and it kept on going for like one hour of meditation. There was not a single moment in which I wasn't seeing this, uh, this, um, the spirit, the one with the long hair. Um, and actually the name of the spirit, uh, this came in the mind of, uh, of my friend was like Sananda. So some say that Sananda is the cosmic Christ. Basically it would be a higher, a higher spirit of which uh, Jesus, the famous Jesus would be an incarnation on earth. Mm -hmm. But, the, you know, so who knows? Uh, let's say th this is what, uh, what I, at this moment, I also believe because I had other contacts later on. But let's say this is the information that came. But then when the meditation, the meditation finished, my friend looked at me and said, I have something to tell you. I had very intense visuals. And I saw this Sananda dressed in red uh, and basically uh, coming behind my back and putting a, a hand on my shoulder and saying, this is my worker. And, uh, and so we both saw this being during the meditation. Mm. And, um, and this came four days after the other lady that I didn't know before and didn't know this other friend of mine told me that I was some sort of messenger. So isn't it interesting? And then what happened is three days later, uh, I had scheduled another session with this uh, shamanic uh, healer. This time it was locked down in Brussels, at least. And uh, so we couldn't meet in person. And uh, so she did it remotely. So she said, OK, I have recorded some drumming. You find it on YouTube, like 33 minutes or something. You just click, lie on the bed, and then after, after the, the music is over, we reconnect via Zoom and you tell me what you felt, right? So I did that. Push the button and start lying on my bed. So at the, during the first five minutes, I feel nothing. And then at a certain moment, I feel uh, my arms getting progressively paralyzed, starting from the tip of my fingers. It goes all over my shoulder. And then basically, I don't feel my, my, both my arms. Mm -hmm. And then my head gets lift up. I have again this spinning sensation. My eyelids are flickering. And at the same time, also the laptop on which I was broadcasting 
the the music feels the energy and flickers as well like the connection was going in and out in and out in and out while my eyes were flickering and uh, and then i see uh, again the face the face of this sananda and then i see a portal opening behind him then the, his image disappear and i see these beings i see the same beings that i saw during the past life regression the the white ones with the long neck but very friendly eyes i'm not talking about eyes that look a bit like insectoid kind of they were really really round and they were all around this portal looking at me then they disappear and then i see what i believe were all my spirit guides lined up i could see i, I couldn't focus on the individuals uh, individual shapes but they were all very different. The colors were different. Some were blue, some were brown, some were white. But the only one that I recognized was the mantis that I already knew was around me. And, uh, and then, OK, once the music stops, uh, my arms go back to normal immediately. And, uh, and then I immediately called my friend and said, oh, I had this extraordinary experience. What did you feel? What did you see? And she said, well, at the beginning, I had troubles accessing your energy kind of uh, so she wanted to connect to me and do something but uh, she was blocked nothing was working and then at a certain moment she 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 focused on my root chakra and she sees uh, like a light being coming out she said i saw this giant golden being uh, coming out and looking at me and uh, i couldn't even in her mind's eye she couldn't look straight in the face of this being she could only look up to this to to this uh, to the chest kind of it she was not allowed to look in the face of this being and uh, then i was like whoa this is uh, really you know in eight days i had all these things happening and uh, w i mean I, I was wondering what's the, what's next right so i had, i was full of expectations and uh, i started meditating more regularly maybe at the beginning it was more like once once a week or something. Oh, Dr. Oh, Lanny, you mentioned drums and vibrations. The ancient people, like the Druids and even the Egyptians, used drum pounding and to move objects. They actually use sound frequency to move things, elevate things. So we don't have that technology yet, or do we? We don't know yet. And if you knew, you couldn't say because you're probably under under a secret uh, program, whatever. But uh, no, no, I yeah. don't. I'm not. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so, but no, it's a. Uh, sound and vibrations and frequencies you mentioned it several times it's that's a very that's that's what they use uh, ets use that that is a a force of nature i guess uh, absolutely uh, actually i can recommend that there is some work recent work from an italian guy called uh, corrado malanga is a is a used to be a professor in chemist chemistry mm -hmm. and is uh, also a researcher in abduction phenomena I, I don't agree with his point of view he, he sees all the ATs as malevolent wanted to suck souls and stuff like that mm -hmm. I think he has only a little part of the picture but whatever but he did a lot of study on pyramids and he also uh, figured out that you know pyramids were actually you know uh, built by levitation mm -hmm. uh, using sound right. and he's not the only one actually uh, a lot of scientists believe that way but also, you know, you're you're getting into a lot of the stuff that the ancients knew, like 60,000 years ago, the Anunnaki and, and all these other ancient ETs that, that were coming here on Earth. And mankind has been here and gone, come back, gone, come back millions of years ago. So this past life regressive stuff that you're talking about, yeah, it's in our DNA. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And the, the more, you know, uh, you get this portion of DNA unlocked, the more you remember, the more these psychic abilities can be uh, reactivated, you know, because they're just sleeping. They're there, but they're block, blocked by this, uh, you know, by, by, yeah, this matrix or whatever you want to call it in which we are. Um, but uh, yeah, so after this experience, as I said, I started meditating a bit more regularly. Uh, regularly. At the beginning, I wasn't having any special experience. I was expecting something because, you know, you have for one week so many powerful experiences, but then it stopped again. Right. And then after a couple of months, one day I was meditating in a park here and uh, I had a similar feeling. I started having my eyelids vibrating. I, I felt a lot of energy in my body. I started seeing again Sananda. And then this time 
I see a writing, Galactic Federation, and then I see two groups of beings, somewhere like looking green, like uh, dressed all in robes. I couldn't distinguish faces or anything. It was just robes and hoods. And they were emanating like uh, green light on, on this side. And on this side, similar thing, but in blue light. So, and then I was asking, who are you? Who are you? And then I was seeing Pleiadians for the green ones and Arturians for the blue. And that's where I was like, okay, I knew I was connected to the Pleiadians, but I didn't know I was connected to the Arturians. And, um, and that was interesting because later on, let's say in a matter of few weeks, I did a session with this Indigo Angel, who also has a channel on YouTube. She's very knowledgeable of a lot of things, ET races and, uh, and uh, Akashic records and a lot of other stuff, portals, stargates. And, uh, and she told me that I was, uh, I was abducted by Arturians since I was a child. So probably I, I, I have no memory of what happened when I was a child. But uh, I tend to believe that, uh, yeah, finally I, I got to close the, the circle, you know, I, I needed many, many years to get to the point of understanding what you, happened. You, yeah. you mentioned several races, uh, Pleiadian, Octarians, Syrians, uh, Lyrans, Andromedans. Uh, do you, can you tell us what they look like? Did you see any of okay. these beings? So uh, let's say at the beginning, Every time I was seeing these beings, they were always I, either I was seeing maybe um, individual one. Mm -hmm. For instance, the first Syrian that I saw was looking like a very old man, uh, very skinny and uh, long beard. And uh, and so and that was like presented himself as a as a as a spirit guide. Most of the time I was just seeing uh, like souls, you know, like uh, with robes without seeing the faces. But sometimes I was seeing really facial features. For instance, I've seen many Andromedans and uh, they often appear, at least to me, uh, like uh, either purple or blue uh, skin, sometimes having some uh, sort of jewel, uh, always wearing robes. Most of the extraterrestrial that I see are wearing robes. Even though a few times I see, I saw, for instance, Pleiadians wearing some sort of spacesuit. Now, this is ancient India. They they had the blue aliens there thousands of years ago. Yeah, and, a lot of the gods, the ancient yeah. gods, are depicted uh, blue. Right. But uh, what my theory is that actually, um, I mean, basically, we are a filter. So they, it could be that if you would look at them from their perspective in their dimension you would see them differently and also if two people see are in contact with the same being uh, they may look different i mean they, they may look at something slightly different because they are able to project mm -hmm. uh, you know a holographic image of themselves so but uh, yeah, anyway, so, uh, and then Arturians, uh, I did see Arturians and most of the time they are like, uh, you know, also typically blue wearing robes and a bigger head. Um, and then uh, about Lyrans, yeah, feline features, maybe like a, le the head of a, of a lion, of a white lion, for instance. Um, also, I've seen Syrians. One of my spirit guides is a Syrian called Tia, T. Y A, and she has the face of a cat, but the the body of a woman, and uh, like uh, also wearing a robe. Um, I mean, I've seen so many. Like, um, have you ever I, seen a humanoid ET? Have you ever met one? In uh, in physical per, in in the physical, you mean? Yes. Uh huh. Okay, so you might yeah, have and not known it. Yeah. Yeah, no, what I can say is that the, the closest that I had to a physical uh, encounter is uh, happened, if, I think, uh, like three, four weeks ago. Um, I was, let's say, for some time I was asking for having a uh, uh, some experience, you know, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to see something in the physical. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that night, basically, I, I wake up and uh, I open my eyes very slowly. And when I'm opening my eyes, I see this giant uh, white being uh, that had some sort of uh, mm, 
blue energy twir twirling around like a spiral of of uh, blue energy around and the the beam was very tall and wearing a robe and it was almost reaching the ceiling so i opened my eyes i see that and i screamed three times and just disappear you ever seen a lady in white that has a, a white robe and and covered you know they got their heads covered and i, I saw many times that yes i saw that twice uh, at my foot of my bed and i woke up it's three o'clock in the morning as usual and there was this lady in white with a robe white robe and uh, you know she had something over her head and i thought oh my goodness and i looked and it walked away really slow and disappeared mm -hmm. Oh, well. it's yeah so are they just, okay, another thing dr lenny a lot of people say well et's are demons have you ever had a, a demonic experience okay so there are so many races involved some are uh, have very nefarious agendas and some are have very positive agendas also there is demons are basically uh, non-incarnating not, not, not incarnated uh, spirits, basically, while these extraterrestrials for the most are incarnated. So they have a physical body or some sort of physical body, um, or maybe they're just pure energy. There is there are these light beings that are just pure energy. But most of them, like Pleiadians, Arturians, they actually have a physical body, but the, the matter of their uh, physical body vibrates at a much higher frequency than the one that we can experience, with the, the one that we can even measure with, with our instrumentation. Um, so about uh, demonic beings, when I do sessions one to one with people, sometimes I have seen uh, some entities and sometimes they look a bit like gargoyles. I don't know if you know gargoyles, like in churches, outside yeah. churches, right. you see these sort of demonic big ears. I saw this many times, sometimes interacting with these beings, I get headaches. Uh, a couple of times I got attacked psychically, kind of, and uh, they always trigger very intense physical, at least for me, very intense physical pains. And I know I can see them, so I close my eyes, I go lying on the bed, typically if I can, if I'm at home, and I just clear my space. And then the, 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 the pain disappears, like in a matter of a few minutes, sometimes even seconds. But uh, yeah, so I, I tell you, uh, let's say one, one example, mm, a, a couple of times. So let me think about it. So I used to have a pyramid. I, I know this will sound very crazy, but take it for what it is. And it won't sound crazy to me. <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of crystals. I use crystals when I do sessions or when yeah. I do group sessions and so since long time probably is my first crystal or one of the first that i bought is a white uh, quartz crystal uh, that day i did the group meditation online probably we were like i don't know 10 15 or something during the meditation i got this thought to grab this pyramid and start i mean and start moving it in my hands okay the crystal fell and broke i mean broke a piece and then suddenly I, after the meditation, I go upstairs, I'm hanging laundry. And at a certain moment, I felt an incredible pain in both my kidneys. Oh, wow. Coming out of nowhere. Yeah. And, uh, and then I, what I do, I, I couldn't, I could barely walk. So I go to the bedroom, I lie down and I look with my mind, I, what, what I have around. And then I see this dark being. It was also appearing like, uh, uh, wearing a robe and with the with the hood completely black and then i understood and then i hear orion and so basically what i what i got is that for some reason this being was trapped into my crystal and when i was doing this group meditation they wanted me to release this sort of entity from my space so actually the fact that the crystal broke was to release that bring it to my attention so that I could remove it from my space. It was sort of keeping an eye on me. And uh, yeah, so I, I, at that moment, I visualize, you know, protection. I visualize Angel taking him wherever they wanted to take him and my pain disappear immediately. And uh, I had similar experiences other times. Um, I mean, uh, I know for people who don't practice any kind of esotericism, this can sound very crazy, but uh you know when, 
let's say these kind of experiences are are real let's say oh, so what you're saying is that the evil ones the the ones they cause you pain the evil ones will cause you pain when or... i interact with them sometimes they cause me pain sometimes uh i i'm able to shield myself before i get attacked sometimes they cause pain to other people that's why they come to me and they say i think there is something going on and then i look and i find something attached to them like a vampire mm -hmm. uh, you know energy vampire right and um and uh, yeah and also uh some of these entities uh, like the i'm talking about extraterrestrial um they put implants but some of them put physical implants yes but i've had two yes but some others put energetic implants and maybe these implants come even from uh past lives and uh, sometimes you know people suffer for from for certain physical issues and there is nothing wrong or they cannot find anything and they are they have implants typically they can be everywhere but typically are close to the chakras for instance yeah. in the throat, dr. dr lenny these these energy implants could they be put on a car or or some kind of an object that you're driving or or you work with mm. Not that I know. They have to to be attached to your energy body or something. But so they're drawing. I, yeah. They're I don't know. But they, they can do a lot of things. I mean, uh, the, the thing is that, in, in fact, everything has a consciousness. You no, know? whatever is made of particles that come from, uh, from uh, you know, the origin of the universe. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically everything that is around you um, has a consciousness. So in theory, with the esoteric practices, you can affect even objects and stuff you know so right and the, i guess the et's raise their frequencies so they can disappear and walk through walls uh yeah they, they can lower their density and uh yeah absolutely yeah and we can't do that we're we're, well, we're we, can. we can but uh you have to be able to to yeah to 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 master this uh this manipulation of uh of matter the way they do so we have these abilities but uh, you, your body has to be energetically clean for instance recently i read something that of course i haven't verified <laughs> but um, some say that um, you can you you have not the you have the ability let's say to to go through portals right but, uh, only if you are a vegan if you if you eat meat for instance just by the fact that you eat meat you will never be able you can do a lot of psychic stuff, but you will never be able to walk through a portal if you eat if you don't eat vegan. Wow! So it's are, kind of interesting. Is that you don't have the answer? But are you a vegan? Yes, I became vegan, but uh, sometimes let's say I still have some fallout with some cheese or. But I was asked to actually it, that the first message that came from uh, a Pleiadian um, first. The message came to me during a meditation, but then I said, they said, you are eating like you are not eating well. And at the time I was like eating fish, but no, no meat, but fish. And uh, and then it came through a Reiki master that I knew. She said, they have a message for you. They say that you have to change your diet. And I was like, oh, OK, so I got this message. I ignore it. And then the, it comes again. So. Yeah, basically it helps. It helps uh, to keep your uh, your body energetically clean and it's easier to manipulate energy and do this kind of stuff. It's not necessary. Depends always to up to what level you want to connect. Yeah. You know, yeah. there are, I know a lot of healers, even very experienced. They will never give up meat. They say I can do whatever. But yeah, you can do something but you will never be able to do certain things if you don't stop eating meat hey, so, dr lanny you ruined my bacon for breakfast in the morning <laughs> no, it's okay i mean you can do it oh, yeah. I've, had, the... I've had my experiences like you and i've been a meat eater for you know for some time but yeah i i believe you because i've known other people that were kind of into some mystery mystery things in their minds and people that i knew that were kind of out there not out there but really up here smart and they turned vegan for some reason they got the same message okay we're about ready to close this uh episode two out uh dr lenny is there something you want to tell people how they can uh, look up you got any articles on the on the internet or anything uh no i have a youtube channel where i post some of my meditation and some of them have been tested even with the, at the institute of noetic sciences both with the eeg on 11 volunteers and uh, on under and 19 what's the name of that youtube channel uh, 
Stargate to Heaven with the two number two. Okay, Stargate to Heaven. Uh, yeah, I might put that on. Uh, uh, it says Stargate Meditations, and I'll put that. I'll put that on the uh, text portion of the video. So, yes, and we really appreciate you being here and amazing stories, Doctor Lenny. I really appreciate it. You 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 said some things that I've never heard before. And, and you've also said some things that puts the pieces of the puzzle together for me and other experiencers that might hear what you got to say. And you are a messenger. That's why you're here. And that's yeah, why I you're doing so. the show. <laughs> yes, you're, you're doing the show and that's why you're here. So on that part, I'd like love to have you back again when you have time. And I know there's a lot of my buddies on podcasts and stuff. They're going to they're going to want to have you on their show, too, because you're you're very interesting. You've been listening to the Dave Emmons show and it's been syndicated through WDY radio. And that's Odyssey radio live Eddie Carson's in Maryland and uh, Dave Emmons. show. you can catch it every week, uh, once a week. And Dr. Lanny, thank you so much for being with us. Thank Thanks. You. And, and, and good night to you and have a good sleep tonight. Bye bye. Sure.